Hi, this is Frank with a Frank Opinion. In the fight for Medicare for All, or any fight for a worthy policy for our nation, we've got it backwards, and we've had it backwards for a long time. A recent report by PLOS Medicine in combination with three campuses of the University of California reviewed 90 Medicare for All single-payer studies going back to 1990. Some of these are from the Congressional Budget Office, from the Governmental Accounting Office. There are some that are national in scope. There are many that are statewide in scope. They then decided, based on a set of criteria, to exhaustively analyze 22 of these. And the 22 plans that were studied came up with the following conclusion, and I have the report here. There is near consensus in these analyses that single payer would reduce health expenditures while providing high quality insurance to all U.S. residents. Now these studies, as I mentioned before, go back to 1990, some produced by the Congressional Budget Office itself and the Government Accounting Office. But the 22 studies which have been available to Congress apparently have had no impact on our legislators, on our elected officials. So for 30 years they've known, study after study has shown that the United States would have much less expenditures in the area of health while covering every single person. They've known this. So a few years ago, I thought that my civic duty was to inform, educate, my elected officials on a national level, particularly my congressmen. And I took that seriously. So together with two members of Physicians for a National Health Program, an organization that is a pioneer in single-payer Medicare for All legislation, met with the congressman staff director, presented a lot of information and research, had a good discussion, at that same meeting with the state director, I had purchased a book from my congressman. Uh, this one is An American Sickness by Elizabeth Rosenthal, How Health Care Became Big Business and How You Can Take It Back. At town halls, at least six, I presented him with information. At one, I gave him this fabulous packet produced by a wonderful gentleman by the name of Richard Master who is a medium-sized business owner, an early pioneer and he has set up other institutions to carry on the work that, he, work that he started with his staff. Why? Because he couldn't keep up with the increases in health insurance premiums that were forced upon him by his insurance companies that he was, he was using and he created this particular website, fixithealthcare.com, produced wonderful DVDs on different aspects of our healthcare mess, and proceeded to try to educate people with regard to how ridiculous and corrupt our healthcare system was. I showed and brought to a town meeting our family's final appeal to an insurance company, a major insurance company. This is over a thousand pages. I couldn't have done this myself. I did the first three appeals myself. But the fourth appeal, I had help from a wonderful young lawyer at a nonprofit that coincidentally I used to work for uh, something like 20 or 30 years ago. And this was the final appeal. After a year and a half, 
shedding many tears on the phone because we were trying to be reimbursed for out-of-pocket costs that were incurred in terms of a major health issue. Um, and that health company expected yours truly to either die or give up. This is something that I've heard from other individuals dealing with this particular insurance company, and I'm sure that this, this is not unique. So in addition to coming to a town hall meeting, asking a question, standing up, carrying this 1,000 page plus final appeal, I also had with me the check that we finally got. Because that insurance company, in a letter, was declared uh, wrong in denying us over one year's expenses uh, for the health care issue that we were dealing with. This check for $219,949.35 was reimbursement for my wife's pension loan, one of my daughter's college fund, with which we had exhausted savings, and then a personal loan from TD Bank. So this is not like we were wealthy and had $220,000 laying there in order to fight for the health of a valued family member. No, we had to take loans. We had to do all kinds of things that Americans do each and every day. Some go on GoFundMe, some don't take their medications, some don't even seek a physician or hospital care. They die. They go bankrupt. My congressman should know this. The airwaves, the amount of information is vast. The amount of information that I personally have given to this congressman is also great. I also told him that I could connect him with a absolute expert in the area of Medicare for All, a giant, actually, the uh, PLOS California University report and using their criteria to come up with the 22 studies that they would thoroughly analyze, four of the studies, four of the 22, are of this individual. He is a giant. I will mention his name. He has just come out with a book. His name is Dr. Gerald Friedman. And you can't see it here, but the studies continue to increase in the amount of money that can be saved by a single-payer system. And one would expect that, given the fact that there is relentless increases in cost across the insurance companies, across the providers, the hospitals, with the monopolization of services and the consolidation, and of pharmaceutical companies that have run rampant. So. Where has our congressman been in this district? And what is my responsibility now? I tried to educate this congressman, presenting him with information, going to town halls, writing a letter, I didn't mention that, indicating a lot of things, trying to get him to speak with and learn from a giant relative to Medicare for all, but he rejected those, he shunned those, they went off his back like water off a duck's back. Why? Because he doesn't care. So either he has a level of incompetence that is beyond my comprehension, or he's derelict in his duty. And this is where we have it backwards. That congressman works for us. He should be educating us. When his something comes out in terms of a report, he should have, if he doesn't read it, his staff read it. Health care is arguably the number one issue that we have in this country. 
Look at the coronavirus situation. Look at how unprepared we are for this. We've just exceeded China in terms of the number of cases, and we are one-fourth the population. So, what is my duty now? I suggest to you, and if you have a similar congressperson, I am duty-bound to work to replace him. And I suggest that you are duty-bound to replace your congressional representative or your senator. Because they work for you. They work for us. Now, who is this congressman? He's my New York Congressional District 3 Congressman, Tom Swasey. I think he needs to be replaced. Given the current set of affairs and our lawless president and whether we have an election in, in uh, primary in, in June and an election in November, that's up in the air. But whether it is this year or soon after, this gentleman needs to be replaced for somebody far better, for far more competent, and far more caring. Thanks.